Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the arterial supply to the hand and the wrist. This tutorial follows on from the one I did on the arterial supply to the arm and the forearm. What we're looking at here is an anterior view of the distal forearm and the hand. We can see the radial and ulnar arteries which provide the arterial supply to the hand and the wrist via various different branches. We can also see two arterial arches in the palm of the hand. Superficially in the light blue colour is the superficial palmar arch. This arterial arch lies superficial to the flexor tendons and it lies deep to the palm aponeurosis which isn't shown on this model. Deep to the flexor tendons of the hand is this arch that's highlighted in dark blue. This is the deep palmar arch and you can see that it's sandwiched between the flexor tendons of the hand and the metacarpal bones. I've switched over now to a new model which represents the various different arteries of the hand and the wrist. Essentially the ulnar artery supplies the medial half of the index finger as well as fingers 3, 4 and 5. The radial artery on the other hand supplies the thumb and the lateral half of the index finger. So if we begin by taking a look at the ulnar artery and its branches. This branch highlighted in light blue here coming off the ulnar artery is the palmar carpal branch of the ulnar artery and this anastomoses with its counterpart palmar carpal branch of the radial artery. If I rotate the model round to a dorsal view, you can see this other artery coming off highlighted in green. This is the dorsal carpal branch of the ulnar artery. And rotating further around to a dorsal view of the hand, we can see that this anastomoses with a branch that actually comes off the radial artery. This branch coming off the radial artery is the dorsal carpal branch of the radial artery. This anastomosis forms, as you can see, an arch on the dorsal surface of the hand. Now just rotating back again to a palmar view of the hand, we can see another branch of the ulnar artery, which is the deep palmar branch. The deep palmar branch of the ulnar artery anastomoses with a branch of the radial artery to form the deep palmar arch. I've just added in the layer of muscles and you can see how the deep palmar branch of the ulnar artery passes through the origin of the hypothenar muscles to anastomose with a branch of the radial artery to form the deep palmar arch which is highlighted in purple. Now we've looked at the distal branches of the ulnar artery and we can see now how the ulnar artery itself terminates. It terminates by forming this superficial palmar arch which you can see highlighted in blue. And this palm arch is formed by the anastomosis of the ulnar artery with a branch of the radial artery, known as the superficial palmar branch, highlighted in green. Arising from the superficial palmar arch are the common palmar digital arteries. So you can see these highlighted in red. The common palmar digital arteries then divide into proper palmar digital arteries to supply the digits. And if we look medially, you can see this other branch which comes off to supply the little finger. The common palmar digital arteries anastomose with the palmar metacarpal arteries which arise from the deep palmar arch. You can see the palmar metacarpal arteries here in light blue colour arising from the deep palmar arch highlighted in purple. Now coming on to the distal branches of the radial artery. In light blue, we've already seen this branch, the palmar carpal branch of the radial artery, anastomosing with the palmar carpal branch of the ulnar artery. And then in green, we've seen how the superficial palmar branch of the radial artery anastomoses with the ulnar artery to form the superficial palmar arch. So this superficial palmar branch of the radial artery arises just before the radial artery curves round to enter onto the dorsal surface of the hand. After the radial artery enters the dorsal aspect of the hand, it passes over the floor of the anatomical snuff box, and then you can see how it passes between the heads of the first dorsal interosseous muscle to re-enter the palmar aspect of the hand. On the palmar aspect of the hand, it then forms the deep 
palmar arch through this anastomosis with the branch of the ulnar artery called the deep palmar branch, which we looked at before. In addition, there are two other arteries which we can see here given off just as the radial artery turns onto the palmar aspect of the hand. In yellow, we've got the princeps pollicis artery, which is given off as the radial artery turns into the palmar surface to form the deep palmar arch. And this artery runs along the palmar aspect of the first metacarpal, and it divides into two branches distally. The other branch is the radialis indicus artery, which is a branch that supplies the index finger. And you can see this artery in orange running along the first dorsal interosseous muscle. So we've now seen how the superficial and deep arches are formed from the branches of the radial and ulnar arteries. The superficial palmar arch is formed from the ulnar artery anastomosing with a branch of the radial artery, the superficial palmar branch of the radial artery. And we've seen how the deep palmar arch is provided mainly from the radial artery anastomosing with a deep branch of the ulnar artery. We've already taken a look at some of the branches of the deep palmar arch, but again to reiterate, just rotating the model of the hand around a bit, you can see these branches in light blue colour coming off the deep palmar arch. These are the palmar metacarpal arteries, and there are three of these which anastomose with the common palmar digital arteries arising from the superficial palmar arch. In addition, if I rotate the model back dorsally, you can see some perforating branches which anastomose with the dorsal metacarpal arteries. I've just switched to a different view and you can see these perforating arteries anastomosing proximally with the dorsal metacarpal arteries. Now just coming back to look at some of the dorsal branches of the radial artery, we've already seen the dorsal carpal branch which comes off the radial artery as it enters the dorsal aspect of the hand. This forms the dorsal carpal arch by anastomosing with the dorsal carpal branch of the ulnar artery, which we looked at before, and you can see it highlighted in green. In addition, you can see these arteries over here, which come off the posterior interosseous artery and anastomose with the dorsal carpal arch. Now coming directly off the dorsal carpal arch are the dorsal metacarpal arteries. You can see three of these in yellow. So you've got dorsal metacarpal arteries 2, 3 and 4. On the medial aspect, this artery here is actually a branch which is derived from the dorsal carpal branch of the ulnar artery, and this supplies the little finger, and it's not a metacarpal artery. These three dorsal metacarpal arteries, as you can see, divide into two. So they divide into dorsal digital arteries. Now just coming over laterally to the thumb side, we can see here that the radial artery gives off the first dorsal metacarpal artery, which as you can see divides into two to supply the adjacent sides of the thumb and index finger. That's it for the arterial supply to the hand and the wrist. We've taken a look now at the various different branches of the radial and ulnar arteries, and we've looked at how they contribute to the superficial and deep palmar arches, and how they anastomose on the dorsal surface of the hand to supply the hand and the wrist.